Every person who's ever been around Phil Pearson for any period of time is going to be a better human being. So many students will tell you that Mr. Pearson has helped them visualize where they want to go and what they want to do and who they want to be. And to me, there's no better title for someone like Mr. Pearson than visionary. If you're talking about the visionary award, to me that sounds like we're talking about someone's character. That means that, that what you see is what you get and he's the same person whether people are around or not. And he's not doing it for any type of recognition, he's doing it because he truly cares about people around him and in his community. And that's the definition of what you would want every young person to model and see. Bill has reached. Mm. Yeah. I mean, when you say thousands, it's, it's not an exaggeration. Or as Phil would say, an hyperbole. A direct exaggeration again, I'm just of humor, right? It's not a hyperbole. Thousands. Even when I was a little kid, I would go to football, basketball games, and I would see him. So Mr. Pierce is somebody that even before you have him or even before he knows you, you know him. People from all other communities knew who he was because he was just he was a legend. Mr. Pearson always had this larger than life persona. He was kind of the, the stuff that urban legends were made out of. As a freshman, you'd walk, you'd walk by and you'd kind of look in and his classroom always just seemed so intimidating. As you started to, to go through the, the ranks of, of high school um, and, and got to where you were going to be in his class, um, you went from being intimidated to being really excited. He taught a class here called Humanities, and I took it, and he took us to Columbus to see West Side Story. You know, we had to do a class project. Our class project, we had to go see the Cleveland Orchestra and the Cleveland Chorale. And that instilled in me, quite frankly, looking back on it, my love for the arts. I, I'm a big reader, okay? I attribute that to Phil as well, because right outside this wall, there's a little room, it was called the Book Nook, and you could check books out, and I mean, everybody who went to Shelby remembers this, right? Wall-to-wall -wall paperback books. Well, the school district didn't buy those. Those came out of Phil Pearson's pocket. Whether you were in his class, not in his class, it didn't matter. He knew you, he cared about you, he wanted to know what you were doing, he was gonna give you a hard time about something. And it's really a rare thing for an educator to make each student feel so uniquely special and uniquely interesting with what they want their life to be. There's no doubt he made me a better student. And I would say this, not only because he was challenging, but because he prepared me for college, which was something I needed at that time. I was so prepared when I got to the next level of my educational journey because he had taken the time to say, we're not just gonna do the basic. What we're gonna do is we're really gonna elevate your understanding of the subjects. And we're really gonna push you to be critical thinkers. We all have teachers who model unbelievable great behavior for us. And he was one of mine. Like I said, I had him for two or three courses. And uh, I went away to Bowling Green, was a business major until the day before classes started. Phil Pearson had such a tremendous impact upon me. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to have the same impact on kids that Phil Pearson had on me and my friends. The influence he had on, on the school district is one, he, he set an example, and he set uh, that example, the standard that he set was extremely high. You know, you wanted to somehow emulate Phil as, as a professional, right? That, that's the gold standard. How do I get there? As someone who grew up here, who heard great things about Mr. Pearson as a human being in my home, and then to see it with my own eyes, and then to move back with my own two daughters, we, we tell stories about Mr. Pearson in our house because that's the type of person we want our girls to see, and we want them to model those type of characteristics because he's such a quality human being. Mr. Pearson does not really know anything about sports. He just knows people need help. 
So he's willing to do and volunteer and help however that is, whether it's getting Gatorade ready, whether it's, it's getting someone's equipment issue fixed. Every player that's ever played for Shelby football since Mr. Pearson has been the equipment manager, has had a coach that's been upset because we're irresponsible. We will misplace things or equipment. Mr. Pearson is the first guy to not tell a coach and then get you what you need so you don't get yelled at. I saw him do that as a player, and then I saw him do that out of the corner of my eye as a coach, and I loved it. He just cares for everybody, and he's such a well-rounded person because he loves the arts, and he's always helped out in that field, and he's great with athletics, and then he's gonna go around and deliver meals and play organ or piano at just about every church in town. When we joined this church, he was the organist here, so I got to know him better. And then I got put on Council of Churches, and Phil has been president for years. <laughs> Council of Churches is just lay people that get together and talk about different happenings in the churches. They do things like Meals on Wheels, The Messiah, Jess Rath Banquet. I think he saw a need a chance to recognize people for what they were doing in the community so that other people would know. He loves people, wants to do things for them. He's, he sacrifices so much. We had geraniums here at the church for Pentecost and he had called me and wanted me to buy some geraniums for him. And I said, what are you gonna do with those, Phil? He said, there are people out here that work very hard and don't get any recognition. So he gave them to a couple of people that work out there. He's still thinking of other people and how he can help, how he can make their day. He has always embodied showing up. He is at your graduation. He is at your sporting event. He is at your play. He is at your after school event. He is at the funeral home when you've suffered a loss. He is at everything. And I think that from the late 1960s all the way through his retirement, you'd be hard pressed to find students that have come through Shelby Senior High School that don't have Mr. Pearson woven into the fabric of their memories because he just showed up. He is that visionary for students, community, and the school. Anybody that knows Mr. Pearson, and I, I again, it's, it's Mr. Pearson for me, I can't. My parents raised me too well to say anything like Phil or Buff, which was his nickname. He said, Eric, we're colleagues now, please call me Phil. And I said, Mr. Pearson, I do not feel comfortable doing that because I respect you so much. I think the players even thought it was funny because I almost treated him as if he was still my English teacher. It's almost impossible to call a, a teacher, much like Mr. Pearson, by his first name. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Um, and he is forever uh, ingrained in my, my mind and my heart as Mr. Pearson and it's the, the highest form of flattery and praise that we can give him.